Hi, this is Pastor Ryan. I just arrived at San Francisco Airport. We got done with the second week of Institute yesterday. As you can see, we have five less people. We had eight people, but it was a very important second week of Institute, training our future interns and full-time missionaries. I'll be visiting Radiance Church, Pastor Andy Kim. I'll be preaching tomorrow and offer a seminar. Anyway, I'm gonna see if Andy is waiting for me, so I'll check you guys later. Bye. Hi, the video clip you just saw was taken two days ago. This is Monday. I'm about to leave for the airport. Yesterday was a long Sunday for me. I spoke on spiritual warfare in relation to social justice matters. And also I spoke about inner healing. Now I'm not known for inner healing, but I was asked to provide biblical justification for inner healing. So I did that. I cannot share the entire message, but a short video clip of my teaching. And also I interviewed Andy and his wife, Jane. Now. I first met Andy and Jane six years ago when I did cohort group here in San Francisco and I got to know him really well. He became the lead pastor of Radiance Church earlier this year. It's a very important and formidable task, especially in the city of San Francisco. And personally, I cannot think of a better person to take on that challenge as it depends on the Lord. So enjoy the video and I will see you later. Thank you. I'm in the front of Radiance Christian Church. This is where they meet, it's a community center. I think they've been meeting here since 2013 or 14. Kind of chilly today. Sunday service will begin in about an hour. I'm going to take you in a little later on. Many of us are products of secular education. According to old Bonner report, the ratio of a typical person's exposure to secular beliefs and value, as opposed to the biblical counterpart, is 20 to 1. That is to say, 95% of all that we read and hear on the one hand extols what man have accomplished without ever accrediting it to God. That's secularism. On the other hand, 95% of all that we read and hear talk about what men have perpetrated, atrocity that men have committed without ever considering the devil's role in it. So we're doing devil a big favor. You have no role in this atrocity. Hitler did it all by himself. Mao Zedong did it all by himself. Pol Pot did it all by himself. No devil involved. For them, what's the devil? It's a poetic expression, is it not? The result? It gives the impression that what humans have done and think are far more important than anything God has done and said. It gives the impression that the root cause of all our problems is mainly sociological, psychological, and political, but not spiritual. That is nothing whatsoever to do with spiritual warfare. No wonder nothing really gets done because we're addressing symptoms, not cause. So why we have a problem? Faulty social system and bad education. All oh, those are factors. Are they the cause? No prayer, no nothing. It's just new politicians promising empty promises. Every four years we are fools. Hi, this is Sunday afternoon. We went to church, just ate a great meal. This is Andy. This is my wife, Jane. Hi. <laughs> well, he's quite young. How old are you? Well, I feel like I'm um, 45 at least. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've known the for a while. So Andy, you were Pastor Mark's assistant for how many years? About six and a half years. Okay. So now that you are a senior pastor of the same congregation, what has been the biggest difference? I think for me personally, um, probably the spiritual weight of the ministry. Uh, mm -hmm. 
lead pastors out there, I don't know how you guys have done this for so long. Yeah. It's incredible because that first month, the amount of dreams that I had that were not very pleasant, I was very telling of the... Nightmare? <laughs> Already? <laughs> but in all honesty, the uh, spiritual weight is um, definitely there, mm -hmm. and, and I sense it. Now, Jay, did you think about becoming pastor's wife, or is there something just kind of developed as you got married? Oh, no, I mean, I knew I was marrying a pastor because he was already a pastor. Yeah. Uh, it's not my dream, if you're <laughs> asking. I wanted to go on missions at some oh, point. Oh, you did? Okay. But then when I met him, yeah, it just worked out and I didn't mind. <laughs> now, you have two little kids, right? And believe me, they're very active, you know? <laughs> and you, you have profession and uh, church is not small. So how do you juggle all that? Uh, I don't know. I, how do I? <laughs> I feel like God's given, it really feels like God's grace over our lives because mm -hmm. it didn't feel like everything happened all at once. It's like happening in most bite-sized seasons mm -hmm. where I'm learning from the previous season so it just builds on rather mm -hmm. than all at once. So mm -hmm. it's actually been manageable and if anything, it's really awesome to have, because we actually have a lot of kids are their age mm -hmm. in our church and that's been really helpful to do life together with families. Yeah. Hey, Andy. You've been here for a while, the police studios observed the guy. What have you seen that concerns you the most about today's young people, people who come to church? Yeah, it's a great question. I think for me, how much of this desire for community mm -hmm. and purpose is more of a reaction to uh, what the pandemic did, which is uh, really brought out the loneliness and the lack of purpose in people's lives mm -hmm. versus an actual conviction from the Holy Spirit uh, to be a part of the church and what God can do through them and through the church. Mm -hmm. And so kind of finding that discernment between how much of this is a reaction to the pandemic versus the growth in the community, the hunger that we see is a genuine conviction of the Holy Spirit. So what is God teaching you these days uh, as a pastor, as a Christian, as a husband and a father? What has been some of the things that the Lord has been teaching you? It's always the simple basics. Mm -hmm. Am I walking with God? Uh, if I'm not walking with God, then it affects my marriage, it affects the family, it mm -hmm. affects how I see the church, it affects my sleep. <laughs> 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 it, it is. It really comes down to, am I walking with God? And sometimes I feel like I'm walking ahead of God, mm -hmm. trying to come up with my own plans and my own thoughts. Or sometimes I'm not walking at all, and I just... <laughs> want to do nothing and it shows me that I'm probably doing a little bit too much if anything so walking with God is something that God is continually showing me. I'm glad to have visited them because I just got installed as a senior pastor not too long ago. Please pray for them, they have two rambunctious kids and uh, <laughs> they're gonna just demand our energy for them, churches, a lot of young people so I'm happy to spend some time and actually get them to talk with me to share with you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank God bless. Bye. God bless.